Hello everyone, Gary here live at Learning Technologies where I was lucky enough to speak to some brilliant people from the world of L&D for 15 to 20 minutes each and you are about to watch or listen to one of these episodes now. If you like what you're hearing from our guests, just check the description, there's a link in there where you can connect with them. That's also where you'll find the link to the death of the LMS guide, a report which helps you build a skills first approach to L&D. So as always, any feedback or if you like this format, you can let me know on LinkedIn and otherwise enjoy the episode. I'm happy to say I'm joined by Hannah Wadhams, Marketing Director for Mass Marketing. I'm excited to have this conversation about how we can apply marketing principles to engage L&D for three reasons. One, I'm a big marketing geek. <laughs> Two, I like the way you talk about marketing and translate it to L&D. And most importantly, I think there's a load of stuff that L&D teams can leverage from the world of marketing and apply. So hopefully for the next 15, 20 minutes, we're going to give people as much gold on that front as possible. I'm sure we will. Um, so the first one would be putting the audience first. Seems simple, but how is often is it missed? How can we do it a bit better? L&D talk about putting their audience first all the time. We love to talk about yeah. it. It's a hot topic. It has been. I've been in this industry for nearly 10 years. Yeah. It's been spoken about since day one. Nobody actually does it though. Yeah. We're all led by like business mandates. Yeah. Oh, this is what C-suite want. This is what everybody else wants. And of course, in L&D, we have to straddle both. Yeah. We have to put the business objectives first. We have to make sure that we're servicing the business. But we can't forget about our learners mm. in doing that. Yeah. If we forget the, about the learners, they're not going to want to engage. And yeah. then everyone's like, oh, nobody <laughs> wants to take this learning. Yeah. Well, shock, they don't <laughs> care. Yeah. So we talk a good talk. Yeah. I think it's time people like walk in the world. Yeah. And I think that even starts with small actions, doesn't it? Like. The, the wording you use is a good example. Like we can decide from the top down, this is how we're going to name resources. This is how we're going to talk about things. Yeah. Uh, and the other end, there's an end learner or an end user who already has their own terminology, Absolutely. who already phrases like when they've got a problem, they use this terminology and we should be tapping into things like that and, and stuff like that, isn't it? Also the phrase learner, yeah. that's problematic, <laughs> yeah. but it's so industry accepted yeah. that it's really difficult mm. to not use the yeah. word learner. But it implies that people are already learning. Yeah. And I'm sure mm. most l and will tell you yeah. most of their learners yeah. aren't learning. Yeah. Um, and we had Nick Shackleton-Jones on the podcast recently. Yeah. And he was like, it's like calling humans breathers. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it really is, isn't it? We, we really shouldn't be saying learners, but it's yeah. an old habit and old habits die yeah. hard. I suppose it's like a, sh a small mindset shift. Because if we're calling them learners, it's like, it's easy to fall into the trap of their primary requirement is to learn, like they're Absolutely. there to service yeah. our need. But yeah. if we think about it in terms of that's just an employee trying to do their job, their title is X, and obviously the goal is to, as role X, is to perform Y tasks. Well, even that, aren't they just humans? Yeah. Aren't yeah. they just people yeah, that exactly. want to do better in life and yeah. progress? Or maybe they don't. Maybe yeah. they don't want career growth. <laughs> and awesome. that's also a yeah. target audience we need to serve yeah. it as yeah. yeah. So what are we going to do? Yeah. No, I agree. It's funny I was having this conversation with someone recently, like sometimes growth doesn't happen all the time. And you yep. need to remember that, like I might have just spent six months learning a load of new stuff and growing and I need to six months to acclimatize, yeah. chill. And, and embed it as well. Yeah, that's the other thing. And I guess one thing you spoke about there is the human at the end of it. So often there's a load of great content, there's great initiatives in place, but there's a real lack of awareness, a lack of excitement. We've not got the visibility or the buy-in or the buzz, whatever way we want to phrase yeah. it. Is there a way we can do more to simply just get people excited about it and, and principles we can leverage from yeah. marketing on that? Well, I think the first step of that is to think of them as human beings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we talk a lot about learner personas and people rock up to us, oh, I've got learner personas. Yeah. And it's like, this person likes to learn in this way. Yeah. Yes, I do still see that. Yeah. And this person <laughs> only has this much free time. And well, actually, let's think about who they are as a human being. Yeah. What's actually driving them? What's their motivation at work? Is it yeah. that they want to serve their family better? They want a really good salary? They want a brilliant work-life balance. And once you start thinking of them in that sense, you're having a very different conversation through your marketing efforts. Yeah. You're not saying, learn this, do that. Mm. You're like, help yourself. Yeah. Think of how this will help you outside of work. And the tactics that L&D are applying actually aren't that bad when they're yeah. doing marketing for learning, but they're thinking of it from a learner point of view. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we need to stop. Yeah. So once you start thinking of people as humans, yeah. like normal marketing would, yeah. you yeah. wouldn't suddenly think of like a Tesla car driver as like, he is a driver, yeah. the driver only. Yeah. But that's what we do in yeah. learning and we need to stop that. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's the classic features tell, benefits sell and narrative is what wins people over. So yes, that person is a car driver, 
and they want to get from A to B, but it's more than that. It's like, I need to pick my kids up from yeah. school. I want the freedom to take my family yeah. to places. And or, let's be honest, with Tesla, it's yeah. like, I want to have the biggest car and it's fancy. Yeah, exactly. And that's fine. Yeah. Accepting that that's how people feel yeah. at times. Yeah. So some people, we often uh, talk to people and they're like, oh, so many of our people, they really like certificates. Yeah. Well, they want recognition then, yeah. don't they? Yeah. And that will drive them, getting put on that pedestal to mm. say, oh, look what this person's done. Yeah. That will be a motivation for them. Yeah. We should tap into that in yeah. our marketing. Yeah, I agree. I think because often with marketing is the emotional connection is the strongest one and, yeah. and you're never going to get an emotional connection if you, <laughs> you start further down the funnel of like this person's a learner or an employee. It's like, like you said, that human element is what's the actual motivation yeah. for this person? Absolutely. Um, we have to do a bit more of that, I think. And it brings us to a nice ever growing marketing acronym of WIIFM, which the is Wiffen. like, yeah, the WIFM, <laughs> my favorite acronym is WIFM. It's been like around for a decade yeah. at least, hasn't it? Um, more than that, more than, say, yeah. yeah. But that's the question we have to answer, isn't it? Like, what's in it yeah. for me? That's a simple one. And I think L&D struggle with that, yeah. because as soon as I say, all right, we've got to answer the what's in it for me, yeah. they go from their point of view again. Yeah, yeah. You have to put yourself in your learner's shoes, yeah. using the, yeah. <laughs> the word. You have to put yourself in their shoes yeah. and then answer it from their point of view. What's in it for them? They mm. don't really care. Nobody woke up one morning and was like, yeah. I'm going to do a GDPR course yeah. today. Yeah. And I'm so excited about it. No one's ever done that. Yeah. What's in it for them? Yeah. And then market on that basis. Yeah. Not what's in it for the business, not what's in it for the L&D team, mm. not what's in it for anyone else other yeah. than that individual. Yeah. That's what we need to answer. Yeah, I agree completely. And it's a principle we can apply upwards as well. Like Absolutely. if you're not going to speak the language of the people at the top of the food yeah. chain that you need to get buy-in from, you're also never going to, they'll never understand what's in it for them. Yeah. So it's kind of a simple principle that if you apply in context upwards and downwards, yeah, you will build a better. Marketing upwards is a big thing for L&D yeah. as well. Yeah. We need to get stakeholder buy-in. I know a lot of L&D practitioners that yeah. want to push the boundaries and want to do different things. Yeah. And it, not even just with marketing, with their whole L&D function, yeah. but they're struggling to get buy-in from further up, yeah. from CEO and people like that. We need to break the narrative of L&D is just, click next for in training yeah. how are we actually pushing that so marketing upwards mm. to explain to them what we're actually doing here yeah. is necessary too how are you seeing that translate to how people do market upwards for me i've seen a few things recently around are they using data to tell a story yeah. uh, the fear of inaction or the cost of inaction some of those things but you've seen any other sort of principles that work I've, I've, date is a big one yeah. when you're thinking about that target audience of marketing upwards yeah. they love data yeah. Yeah. if you can prove that it works yeah we're marketers, we always say, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Yeah, yeah. So run a little test. Yeah, yeah. Look, I've had this X percent gain mm. by doing it this way. How, yeah. Imagine if we rolled it out across the whole company. Yeah. Um, and things like that really do work. Yeah. Um, and it is in a marketer's just nature yeah. to push the boundaries. And yeah. I want L&D to adopt that a bit. Because yeah. it's like, oh, my boss won't let me. Yeah. Mm. Push back a little yeah, bit and yeah. give something a go and I bet you'll have a different conversation. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, you know my view on asking for forgiveness, <laughs> not permission. So I think that is a definite simple one because it is that thing, isn't it? It's like if we can do this with little support, few resources on a small scale, imagine the impact we can have when we scale exactly. it out. And, it's, and you're never going to get to that point if you go, can I go and run this test or can I take an hour of people's time? Because most of the time, no one's going to notice if you just there go. There is a lot, of red, a lot of red tape that yeah. we have to jump through, especially yeah. in L&D. So many different departments yeah. do try to get involved and yeah. we do just need to have a bit more confidence in ourselves yeah. as well and say, yeah. oh, no, actually, we know this is going to work yeah. and we're going to do it and we'll prove, yeah. prove it to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that leads us nicely to being a better business partner, aligning with other parts of the business. That's another simple kind of common thing that happens in marketing that maybe yeah. isn't happening in L&D. Yeah, if any, anyone listening to this, and I'm sure if you relate as yeah. a marketer yourself, Marketing know everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we have friends in finance, we yeah. have friends in HR, we have friends in L&D, yeah. we have friends in sales. Yeah. We yeah. befriend the organization yeah. because then it's much easier <laughs> to get everyone on board with what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Imagine if L&D did that. Yeah. Imagine if you got a message from your friend saying, we've got this new program yeah. and you really, it would be great for you. You're going to yeah. believe it more. Yeah. L&D needs to get better at amplifying their own message yeah. um, and kind of their personal brand and their brand as an L&D team. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone has to go out and develop a logo, yeah. but you still have a brand. No, no, I agree. The personal brand is a big one, actually. I've noticed, I've been paying more attention to it since I started posting more frequently, yeah. but it gives you credibility inside your organization because Absolutely. people, are re you're really going to get time on like a big company all hands to be like, look, here's some principles of marketing that could work, but you're going to be connected to your coworkers on LinkedIn. Yeah. And therefore, if you're sharing 
um, personal stuff or even like we're just launching this new initiative for learning. It's a, diff a different way to get that buzz and buy-in, isn't it? And we, we often talk about um, getting employees to help amplify messages yeah. in influencer kind of style. Yeah. Because you do believe, and that's why influence marketing works so well externally, yeah, yeah. because you believe human beings yeah. over a brand. 100%. Always. So yeah. if your mate's saying to you, this is a great product, take it, get involved with it, yeah. you're going to be more inclined. Yeah. And L&D need to start networking in that way to get more people to be advocates of what we're doing. Yeah. And it's another principle we can apply. If you think about one of the go-tos for marketing teams is let's create a customer story. How do we make the success about the person who used the platform rather than it's easy for us to tell you how good our platform yeah. is. But we can do that with people internally. Say if we help someone from sales increase their pipeline 40% or close 20% more deals, that is a success story we can communicate that's yeah. believable. And a lot of companies I talk to have like gold star learners. And whenever yeah. I say that to people, they're like, oh yeah, yeah. I know exactly <laughs> who you're talking about. Yeah. Those people have engaged with what you're doing yeah. and they've had progress from it. That's yeah. why they keep coming back. Yeah. So put them on a pedestal, let them share their story. Yeah. Don't make it about the business. And mm. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they were like, training shouldn't be about the business completely because when that person leaves, they still have that skill. Yeah. So mm. tapping into a narrative about this is gonna help you, yeah. not the business, not your career here, your career full stop, mm. that will get more people engaged and yeah. people will believe a story and facts and figures that go with it. Mm. Like imagine, I've met companies that have like, somebody joined as a graduate and now they're a director. Yeah. Yeah. Tell people about that. Don't yeah. just let people, don't assume people know about it is what we're trying to say here. And actually it's a great way to improve that relationship with other departments because if you say to the marketing team and they're trying to build an employer brand, well, this person's been here 10 years and look how much they've grown or um, the talent acquisition team, go with this story and take that out there yeah. and put it as part of the process when you're trying to find new staff Absolutely. to show it the career growth. So it's another quick win, I think. I think with case studies, the biggest thing that L&D have to get over, yeah. and it's a challenge, and I think any early marketers will tell you how difficult it is, convincing people to actually get involved yeah. is tricky. You have to do a lot of hand-holding, but that's okay. Yeah. It's worth that hand-holding, mm. it's worth I don't know if you're going to do it virtually, jumping on a Zoom call and yeah. facilitating that recording yeah. for them, helping people through the process. Mm. And once somebody's recorded one video for yeah. you, it's then got to become second nature and it's not so scary anymore. Yeah. But you do have to hold hands a little mm. bit. And I have noticed some reluctance from yeah. Elodie as wanting yeah. to do that. Yeah. And if you do it, it's going to pay off. So I'd encourage everyone, just hold hands a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. <laughs> it's a high investment at the start, but like you said, it will snowball. The more that it becomes part of the common culture, that look, we put out these great videos or these stories about people, the more people want to get involved. It's just that high barrier to entry. Well, it's also with marketing as a whole, marketing for yeah. learning as a concept and getting that wider engagement, you get more people learning. They're going to tell more people about it. Yeah. You're going to have to do less marketing. Yeah. They're yeah. going to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, you have to invest up front, but there is a flywheel approach yeah. to it yeah. and it is going to rapidly increase. Yeah. It's, you just need to put that timing up front. That's it, yeah. Just expect the delayed gratification, but when it comes, <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> it will be worth having. Uh, maybe just a final thought on sort of tactical advice for creating personas and, and actually making that usable and the, the, the yeah. sort of journey for those humans at the end of learning. You know what, over the last two days, I've not stopped talking about personas. Yeah. It's tricky because you are really, you're having to tap into your empathy as yeah. a human being and trying to make sure that you're putting yourself truly in their shoes. You're not yeah. putting your biases in and putting yeah. your subliminal messaging in. Interview people yeah. as much as you can. I always use 10% as a good rule of thumb. I've had a few clients that are like, I've got 5,000 learners. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Do as many as you can, but talk yeah. to as many people as you can face to face. That's yeah. when you're gonna get that qualitative research that's really gonna give you the human side yeah. of the data. Mm. Use your demographics. We have so much data in L&D. Yeah. If I tell marketers that don't work in our industry how much data mm. we have, they're like, this yeah. should be easy for you guys. So tap into your HR systems. Yeah. Look at your LMS mm. historically, what's yeah. going on there. Look at any other platforms you've got and what data is there and what's it telling you. Yeah. Dissect that data down and then piece it together into like clusters almost. Yeah. Yeah. What works together? There might be people that might straddle two personas. Yeah. There might be someone that perfectly fits one. Yeah. There might be somebody that doesn't really fit in anywhere, but between them all, mm. it works. Yeah. What you're trying to do with personas is get a message that's gonna resonate with more people yeah. on scale. Yeah. So I think tactically, it is going away and doing that research. L&D yeah. is, again, we're busy people. Yeah. We are a really busy industry. Yeah. Learning professionals are really time poor. Yeah. 
but we hear that all the time. So it's time for us to actually say, no, I'm going to reinvest yeah. this time. I'm going to block, block out a week, yeah. get 15 interviews done and yeah. see yeah. what that tells you. Yeah. And you made a great point there as well, actually. Sometimes we don't even need personas because we have data that we can use to segment. So, for example, we say uh, there's 20 people in the marketing team and only five of them have this skill that is, I don't know what it might be, uh, copywriting, for example, yeah. and everyone would benefit from maybe improving yeah. their copywriting skills. So we can target the right people yeah. with it rather than... But the argument there yeah. is that the persona will help you personalize that message yeah. to them. Yeah. Because you can say, you need copywriting skills, and they That's go, oh, I'm a brilliant copywriter, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And you know they're not. That's so true. how are you going to tap into their emotions and <laughs> yeah. actually get them moving? And that's where mm. personas come in. That's and you need the data there yes. to do things like that, yeah. but you also need that human side of yeah. marketing that really makes a difference. Yeah. No, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. I guess the thing is, like, no one has ever wanted to learn by you going to them and going, you're bad at this thing, you need to learn more. Let's be honest. How many people actually want to learn? Yeah. I know I've spoken to a lot of people here yeah. today yeah. that are in our industry that want to learn, <laughs> but that's why we work in learning. Yeah. Like, of course we are. We are all, I think, I don't think I've met anyone in this industry that doesn't yeah. actually like learning new yeah. things. But we're the anom anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> we're the difference here. Yeah. Our people probably aren't waking up in the morning going, yeah. oh, I really fancy learning something new. Yeah and saying to them, you're really bad at that, it's yeah. not gonna yeah. motivate yeah. them to actually get involved. Yeah. No, it's, it circles right back to that human thing. Like personally, what I'll do is I'll download like three or four podcasts about marketing and then after seven, or learning and development, and after like seven or eight hours at work, the last thing I want to listen to is another podcast about yeah. marketing. Yeah. So it ends up being like a week or two weeks till I finally get to yeah. them. So even the most motivated people, like there's that context and yeah. that human element that we need to yeah. remember. And it is tapping into the emotions. Emotions yeah. are a big thing. We always say tap into the whole wheel of emotions. Yes. L and Ds are also scared to tap into like fear because it's like you don't want to make someone think they're going to lose their job. Yeah. Of course you don't. <laughs> but tapping into like the fear of missing out. Yeah. The fear of your career not progressing in the way yeah. you want it to. The things you need to do now because the world is changing. Mm. I, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to say AI, but yeah. I've said AI yeah, now. Yeah, well, yeah. So it's all that anyone's <laughs> talking about over yeah. the last couple of days. The world is changing. Yeah you can tap into those emotions of how we're going to help you make yeah. sure your future grows. Yeah. Just the human side, as you said, yeah. that's yeah. the big difference. That's it. People want that security and yeah. uh, sometimes, or whatever the emotion is, there's ways to build your message around that and you'll yeah. get so much more buy-in. Finally, any sort of marketing principles we missed today that we should have covered? I think campaigns are a big one. Yeah. Um, but if you're just starting out with marketing, you need to get the groundwork done. Yeah. So you need to be thinking about your personas. Mm. You need to be thinking about your learning brand. As I yeah. said, you don't need a logo for that. Yeah. Yeah. Like branding's a lot more than just a logo and pretty colors. Um, but then once you've got that groundwork in, campaign marketing yeah. is a big game changer for L&D. Mm. Making sure it's not on a program by program basis. Yeah. You don't need to just market your new leadership calls. Yeah. Market who you are as a team and come up with like different campaigns. Yeah different things. I spoke to someone yesterday that did coasters. Okay. Um, I had their branding on it and then yeah. I had a QR code. It was like, why did the chicken cross the road? And you had to scan the QR to get, code to yeah, get the answer. Okay. Nice. Um, and it, it was a funny joke, but then it was getting people to remember the brand. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. But you have to do the groundwork yeah. first. You have to know your audience mm. and you have to be making sure that your product, because that is what learning is, is matching up to mm. their needs. Yeah, and I think that helps you build something long lasting. You've got the right principles in place. And then you're looking at things at, as campaigns. So often what happens is we launch something and then it fizzles out because we view it as just like one term thing or yeah. like a, a project that lasts three months. So yeah. that, that creates its own problem. And I've spoken to so many in Indias that have yeah. like phenomenal platforms, phenomenal off the shelf content, all of this stuff that's incredible. We're never saying that you don't need all of that. You yeah. need all of that, <laughs> but then they just put it somewhere, send one email and think they're done. Yeah. And nobody ever finds it that yeah. way. So you're wasting your investment by yeah. not marketing your yeah. learning. Don't set it and forget it. It's not that one. Exactly. Um, cool. So thank you so much for today. Thanks I'll for having be putting me. links to your profile, mass marketing, in, in the description wherever people are watching or listening. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Brilliant. Thank cool. you so much. Before you head off, I want to tell you about two very exciting things. Death of the LMS, your free guide to skills first LD is now live. From the numbers that explain LD's current problems to lessons on how you can build a skills led strategy. This is going to help you drive more impact through learning. You'll find the link right at the top of this episode's description. And just below that, a link to our new weekly walkthrough, where we show you how this can be done in practice and give you a tour of how now. Our learning experience platform that gets five times more engagement than a traditional LMS. So 
Thanks for listening and we look forward to seeing you again for another episode of the podcast.